Apple said at their conference where they unveiled the new iPhones that the iPhone X, which some people are still calling the iPhone X, is the future of smartphones. The future of the smartphone. And whether that is the case or not, we'll have to see. But I don't think it's just me who then thinks, well, who could be excited or who would want to go out and buy an iPhone 8 or 8 Plus when this, which is a wildly different and significantly better phone, of course, a little bit more expensive, is the future of smartphones. It feels like you're buying the final version of the last generation of smartphones. When Apple say, you know, this is the future, it's coming out, it costs a couple of hundred more than the iPhone 8 Plus, but it's significantly better. So this isn't a video about me saying how you shouldn't buy any iPhones and you know Samsung's better or anything like that. This is just my own opinion. I don't see who would want to go into an Apple store and buy an 8 or 8 Plus. I do appreciate they're at a lower price point and that's why they also sell the iPhone 6S and SE, but we are still talking about seven and 800 pounds or dollars uh, respectively for the 8 and 8 Plus versus uh, 999 for the iPhone 10. If you want the 8 Plus, it's only 200 more to go for the iPhone 10. And I know that's a terrible way of rationalizing price and it is ludicrously expensive. I mean, I'm still using the Note 8 here, which is about 870 pounds, which now feels cheap compared to the iPhone 10. But uh, you know, this has got a pretty uh, edge to edge screen as well. But this isn't about, you know, comparisons. This is about why I just don't think anyone should really buy an iPhone 8. You know, you still got the option of the 7, you still got the great value option of the SE, and if you do want the best of the best, what's the difference really between seven, eight hundred pounds versus 999 pounds when you're paying that much anyway? And I don't think it's just me that thinks that. My good friend Saf from Super Saf TV ran a Twitter poll and the results are pretty interesting. So let's think this through. If you do want an iPhone, which one should you buy? Well, the new features on the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus include a new glass body, it's no longer aluminum, which also means it supports wireless charging for the first time. It does, of course, have the same design that we've seen in the last three generations of iPhones with chunky bezels and of course also a home button, which is uh, missing on the 10. It's got the latest Apple A11 Bionic chip, which uh, also supports augmented reality with AR support coming on the App Store soon. And the display's also now got the True Tone technology, which was first introduced on the iPads, which means the color on the screen changes depending on the ambient lighting in your room. But the biggest upgrade on the U8 and 8 Plus is, I think, in the camera department. It's still 12 megapixels, still an f1.8 main rear camera, but it does have a new image signal processor, uh, a new sensor, it does have OIS now uh, on both the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. But really the best new feature, I think, is in terms of video. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus can now shoot 4K 60 video, which no other smartphone can do right now, as well as 240 FPS super slow motion video at full HD. The 8 Plus then takes this further, adding a second 12 megapixel camera with both lenses now offering optical image stabilization, which will be great for keeping your uh, shot smooth and better for low light. As well as that, it also supports portrait mode and a new experimental portrait lighting mode. But that is about it. New chip, new glass body, great new cameras, and wireless charging. It's nothing really to get excited about. The storage has been doubled as well to 64 gigs uh, on the entry level model. Honestly, for me, I think it feels more like an iPhone 7S and 7S Plus. But then you look at the iPhone 10 with its 5.8 inch edge to edge screen, which looks beautiful. It's high resolution using a super retina display. It's also OLED with HDR instead of LCD on the regular iPhones. The OLED screen also improves battery life on the iPhone 10. It's supposed to get an extra two hours over the iPhone 7, which I suspect will be about the same as the iPhone 8. It's got the same dual 12 megapixel camera setup on the back, but this time the second telephoto lens actually has a wider aperture. It's f2.4 versus f2.8 on the iPhone 8 Plus. So the rear cameras are a bit better, but it's on the front using the new true depth camera, which they've managed to cram in right at the top of the phone, which is where that little bit of bezel is. That allows a new face ID unlocking and the new Animoji feature, and also the fact that you can now get portrait mode with the experimental portrait lighting feature on your selfies. I think quite a few people won't actually like the new iPhone 10 because it doesn't have that home button with the Touch ID built in. Having a home button always feels like a safe haven. If you know something goes wrong, you get confused in an app and you just want to go back to the home screen, that's gone now. But it is built into the software now. New gestures allow you to close apps and come to the home screen. And of course, you do still have the power button if you just want to reset it. But I think what's going to be most interesting is how they've got rid of the Touch ID fingerprint reader. There's no reader at all anymore, unlike some of the rumors that suggested they could build it under the screen. They've gone purely for face ID, facial recognition, using that true depth technology. Ho, ho, ho. Let's, uh, 
go to back up here. But all this face mapping, true depth camera stuff also means that the iPhone X exclusively has this fancy new Animoji feature. And to be fair, it is quite easy just to disregard this and think it's stupid and silly, and it is like a little bit. But the fact that it is reading your face and analyzing over 50 different facial muscles, so then one of 12 animated emojis, basically does what your face does. So the iPhone X really does give talking shit a whole new meaning. So I'm sure you'd agree that the iPhone X is way more interesting than the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. But then of course you have to get to the price, starting at £999, same in dollars, uh, for the 64 gig model, or like 1150 for the 256 gigabyte option, which is crazy money, a grand for a phone. So I don't want this video to come across as a don't buy iPhones video, or Apple's rubbish and you should buy something else, not at all. Because my point is really, if you're willing to spend seven or 800 pounds, or whatever it is over contract over two or three years, on an iPhone 8 or 8 Plus, it's not that much of a leap, which obviously means their pricing strategy has gone quite well, uh, to then go for the iPhone 10, which is significantly better and the future of smartphones, apparently. We'll see about that. So I will be reviewing both these phones as soon as I can. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, give me a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button. I'll see you right here next time on The Tech Chat.